Happy and his pal, a robotic stowaway named Half, are on a mission. Find whoever stole Half's missing pieces and get those pieces back. After promising each other that they'd pursue even the faintest of clues to the furthest of corners, our spacefaring duo have bounced from one adventure to the next, hoping that eventually they'll end up in the right place at the right time. Their next stop, a tiny little oasis on a giant planet of star spewing volcanoes, a place where robots melt and humans bake, and magic imbued stars rule the land, or so they think. Happy Astronaut is perfect for readers of all ages, filled with action, humor, and heart. This debut issue will have many exciting covers to choose from, including a blank sketch cover variant to commission your very own cover. Pre-order Happy Astronaut number one from your local comic book shop or directly from kingspotshop.com. Welcome to Cartoonist by Night. I am your host, Anthony Latch. I am joined here with Matt Fife, who is the guy who puts the words inside Happy Astronaut's mouth. Plus, we have Matt Rogers, who draws the mouth of Happy in order for him to say the words, and draws the whole body, actually, and the entire universe around him, and basically the entire universe around us. And Troy is just not happy to be here, because he's actually not here. He's here in spirit through my kid slap shot shirt so uh so in a way troy is always here with us welcome to the show gentlemen how are you guys doing oh i'm i'm great <laughs> sometimes i'll call out you know to somebody specific but you know just waiting for anybody to say anything but you're you're great how are you doing rogers i am doing wonderful i'm drawing a butt right now Oh, there we go. We kick it off right. Um, so yeah, this episode, this subject matter that we're covering for this specific episode is butts. So we're all, oh wait, no, 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 hold on here. Uh, <laughs> the topic reveal is Happy Astronaut. Happy Astronaut is a comic book that is created by you two gentlemen. And what we're going to do here is hang out and talk about it. And I have some fan mail, both questions and fan art and words of praise and encouragement i've got all that fun stuff i've got some cool behind the scenes art process that i've uh, plucked from the interwebs as you guys had your journey with happy astronaut and uh, we're all going to hang out and draw so we do have uh roger's screen up here right now uh you did say that you were drawing a butt um do you want to kind of give us some detail are you drawing something specific for the actual comic at the moment no, just uh, just doodling it up. There you go. I'm and gonna be that guy, the guy that's just like, oh, here's just a little sketch that I threw together, and it's like <laughs> this amazing finished artwork. <laughs> I just whipped this up while you did the intro, uh, Matt Fife. Uh, what are you? Uh, I see your your head's down. Your your shoulders are moving. What are you working on over there? Oh, I'm just getting started. It's 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 uh, some squiggly lines at this point. Okay, so uh, I'll remember to check in, but also if you remember, you know, feel free to hit the share screen at any time because you and I basically uh, have to kind of switch back and forth to allow that to happen. And speaking of me, um, so I went ahead and uh, starting to get my stuff ready. Um, basically uh for my comfortability art level i prefer to um go ahead and get the uh pencils ahead of time so i'm going to be showing off uh 
what I'm doing as long as the uh, the Wi-Fi is uh, recognizing, um, which uh, right now it's uh, not being friendly to me. And uh, all right, what is going on here, everybody? Hold on. It was just working a second ago. <laughs> it was working a month ago. No, um, a plugin is required to share iPhone and iPad screen. So is there a new update here that it wants me to do? Okay, it's doing a new update. Thank you, Zoom. All right, let's see if uh, this update went quick or if it's going to say estimated time six hours from now. I mean, it says that you started screen sharing on my end. Yeah, okay. I'm seeing that too. Okay, now it's I'm not possible. seeing any screen, but. Okay, here we go, everybody. Right. Okay, so here are the pencils I did several weeks back. I have an inspiration of a Madman Adventures cover, uh, which is one of the early miniseries that uh, uh, the All Reds did for their uh, character. And in the actual cover, I believe it's an upside down thing, but I have a poster that's hanging up and the poster is right side up because there's other text underneath the poster. So I am kind of doing a homage or homage. Uh, figure I'll cover both audiences there by saying that. And uh, let's take a look around what I have happening over here. Obviously, we have your character, uh, Happy Astronaut, there in the middle. Um, I, I gave him a nose, so I took some creative, uh, uh, you know, justice there to give your character a nose. We've got a uh, Jughead crown. The old whoopee cap. Uh, Fife might recognize what this is here. Let's turn it around. Is that, is that Crispix? It's a it's a legal version of Crip, Crispix, so it's just oh. cereal, just original <laughs> cereal. <laughs> <laughs> then I got a gallon of milk hanging over there. I've got some random uh, tentacles. Uh, we Ooh. have uh, a character known from the Happy Astronaut Number One Zoop Edition uh lrd is hanging there uh old school style and since troy's not here i happen to throw in uh dilsey uh eventually there'll be a a pickle in the jar as well but i had to go ahead and throw that in there and then i've got that giant eyeball from that uh, zoop issue as well some more tentacles his backpacks flying off of him I'm going around. I'm saving something for the end reveal. Uh, hey, look at this guy here. We have oh, yeah. <laughs> Adventure <laughs> Bug is hanging out. A slice of pizza. And then over in the corner is the actual star of the piece. As we have some uh, fancy looking legs here and uh, a little pumpkin. So we have our uh, pumping, <laughs> pumping the Pumpkin uh, hit character, Joe Crone from Oya oh yeah Comics. Uh, this is his favorite IP created by Brian Lynch. Um, so yeah, uh, this is what I will be inking. I set up the pencils already and I'm going to have at her. So Beautiful. I'll, yes, yes. So yeah, I'll just keep it on this as I go go around a little while and then we'll uh, switch it around to see some of your guys' screen. Uh, what we're going to do here is we just hang out and talk and draw. Um to kind of kick it off, if you guys kind of want to just casually talk about um, how Happy Astronaut started as an idea, uh, feel free. Uh, let's start with Fife here. If you kind of want to just like, how did you eventually get to the point of like, hey, this is the story we should do. Happy Astronaut, have at her. Well, um, that, that came from Rogers. Uh, he sent me the drawing that was just a smiling little astronaut dude. And it said, happy astronaut on it. And uh, he asked me, hey, you should write a story about this guy. And so I did. Um, the first stories weren't that great. Uh, there, there were some good parts to them. It's all a learning process. But now they're the best comics on the stands best yeah and, and uh you've got you you've guys you you guys over there have known each other for quite some time uh when did you guys first meet 
Um, I was a junior in high school. Um, I think. Oh, I was, oh, yeah, yeah, because I was a freshman. It was just, and we it was just we a we shared bad. a locker together. It was really weird, but like me and him and two other kids all lived in the same locker at school, and we'd just hang out and stuff between classes and I don't think we were supposed to share the lockers. Is it because both of you guys are named Matt and we're like, we're one locker short. So you two Matt's, you just have to now be best friends and eventually make comics. That could have been it. <laughs> yeah. That's how that works, right? Well, I know that when we also rode the same bus and I do know that our bus driver thought that we would get along so when she did the uh assigned seating for the bus she made sure that she put us on the same bench i bet she regretted that so much <laughs> getting some hijinks yeah i think so that's how i remember it lots of sleepy early morning hijinks like, oh man, I don't want to be awake. Man, look at him. Uh, yeah, and we've worked on comics for, like I said, many years. But Happy is the one that just we stuck with the longest and most consistent. Instead of like splitting our focus on two or three different things, we just focus solely on Happy. It and worked out well, I think. Speaking of those original drawings, I do have uh, some stuff here. Yeah. yeah. That's he him. <laughs> He's awesome. That's it. He'll probably have to come back one day. That one. That version? Yeah. All right, just flipping through here because I definitely thought I had a uh, thought there was a bigger version of that, but maybe that's all that I had. Did you guys see four images or just two? Uh, I saw two. I okay, saw two. I see what's going on here. All right, I have to move a lot of stuff uh, on my screen in the background here. Um, so yeah, I actually have four images there. All right, so as I get my stuff in order in the background, um so when did you guys get serious about like all right we're, let's settle on this character how do you approach being like all right we we made the comic how are you going to release it basically what was your path to get to the zoop campaign well we changed our mind about how we wanted to get happy to the public multiple times like we always wanted to do a print book because that's what's fun about comics. But like, then we were thinking realistically, like printing a comic book is expensive. And then we were like, we could do a web comic and we kicked around the idea of doing like, a, uh, like it was going to be eight page stories and we were going to get a website and we we're going to get like a whole bunch of ish or of pages backed up so that we had a buffer to go through and we were going to do like one or two pages a week and just get those up. And that's how we were originally going to tell the stories. And then we said, screw that. Well, oh, and if we did that, then we would end up doing like a crowdfunding campaign that would let us basically just do like a trade and then throw extra stuff into it that we didn't put online, like to get people to do it or whatever. Then we were like, nah, let's not do that. Let's do like a 64-page book. Hey, there he is. There yeah, he is. so there's our uh, four images that I pulled off the interweb there of uh, some of the, uh, basically the evolution <laughs> of the character Happy, starting with that orange colored one. But yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to show everybody earlier. That's what's funny is, our publisher was like, you need to make it more colorful. And it's like, he started out more colorful. <laughs> yeah, he went from color, a, basically uh, pulled like a reverse Wizard of Oz and started in color and then dipped into black and white. 
he had a much more involved astronaut suit back then too see because we started to think like as we went through and made the stories we kind of just let's not get too bogged down in details you know like originally he had like the glass helmet and then we were just like ah screw it he can just breathe when he goes on planets the end i think the 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 yeah the science now is uh the suit defies science <laughs> yeah. so anytime somebody has a problem with like one of our stories scientifically not making sense yeah our go-to is the suit defies science yeah you yeah. kind of get to get to the point where like all right you're creating fiction so then you get to the point where like well i can <clears throat> decide how much fiction you throw into that existing fiction to the point where well this is how this is how it works now exactly it's just like if you uh i don't know how much of it was in the zoop book but there was like the the layout of his spaceship didn't make any sense at all like in that one he had a different ship than he has in the redesign but it was just like your generic rocket with one little window but if you look at the interior scenes in the book like there's a multiple windows in the backgrounds like they're just it's all over the place and we were just like screw it the the ship just has what we need when we need it when we need it that's <laughs> I'm trying to find i have my old sketchbooks and i'm looking to see if i have any old happy stuff but this is all prior to that and as you're talking i'm just throwing up some art there for everybody checking out at home Hey, look at that. I've got a lot of stuff on the share screen folder, so I'll just get a get through some of that stuff before I forget about it. Ooh. Now, there's there's one big question I had about like how you guys came up with like a big logo. Um, you know, there here's an image. I'll just show the image and I'll kind of have Matt Rogers, the artist, explain. How did you design this this logo? I pulled this off of the Happy Astronaut uh, Facebook page, and I was just riveted by this, you know, giant H. And it's just like, so can, can you talk about, you know, the approach to, uh, to coming up with that? Yeah, like the two vertical posts of an H, that represents me and Fife. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then the horizontal line from the H... You know, that is our creativity. And what you can't see is that it's actually two horizontal lines meeting in the middle. Whoa. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's a super, super basic version of two people facing each other, mm -hmm. handing each other something. And we're handing each other the gift of happy astronaut. Uh, see, I thought, uh, and I guess that makes Who's sense. Doing? I thought it was going to just be one of those giant jumbo checks, you know, that just has a bunch of, you know, it's a hundred million dollars for issue number one, but man. I mean, that's, that's, that is taken from that picture, hmm. but that's, that's what it means. Okay. I understand. <laughs> All right. So yeah, thank you for that because I've been sitting on that forever. I've been looking at that one for, you know, the better part of the year and uh, the end of last year. And I was just, kind of wanted to wait until I had the proper platform to ask such a question. Um, all right, so let's shift gears here a little bit because I do have some fan uh, some fan mail here. Oh. So I'm going to load up uh, a couple things here. There is one thing I'd like to uh, start with here is that on, one, on our first episode of Cartoonist by Night when talking about uh, oh yeah comics uh my friend leslie wrote in and uh had that question about a musical and and things like that and uh she wouldn't know at that time but she would become part of the happy astronaut creative team in the sense that i made a trailer for happy astronaut number one for the brand new keen spot comic which is available to pre-order now at the time of this recording here and um uh, I had reached out to her. I did a version where I narrated it 
and I thought it was fine. I mean, you guys, you know, you guys gave thumbs up and everything. I kind of surprised you guys with the trailer. A lot of people make fan art, but I'm like, hey, what about fan trailers? And yeah, yeah. yeah. And but then I reached out to her where I'm just like, all right, she's got a theater background and uh, uh, definitely want to get her voice in there. So she recorded that and I think knocked it out of the park. So Mm -hmm. uh, to kick it off here, um, she has some words of encouragement. Uh, She wants to thank you guys for giving her the chance to uh, to be the trailer voice. Um, It was so much uh, fun and a true pleasure. And I just wish you all immense luck with the story you're putting out into the world. And I hope it garners an audience of all ages that inspires them and helps them drift away from the chaos in our real world for a while and have the ability to stow themselves away alongside happy and half. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Thank you. So that is from Leslie there. I figured that would be a good way to uh to to kick off uh part of the fan mail. But Yeah, I'm glad that the first one wasn't hey, you guys suck, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm gonna save all that for the end. So, like, by the time you. you know the yeah. listeners and the the viewers and stuff drift off, they won't even hear that stuff. So, um, Just get and now day goes on. Now there's fan mail. Now, actually, you know what? Before we jump into it any further, uh, let's take a quick break and show that trailer right now. Happy and his pal, a robotic stowaway named Half, are on a mission. Find whoever stole Half's missing pieces and get those pieces back. After promising each other that they'd pursue even the faintest of clues to the furthest of corners, our spacefaring duo have bounced from one adventure to the next, hoping that eventually they'll end up in the right place at the right time. Their next stop, a tiny little oasis on a giant planet of star spewing volcanoes, a place where robots melt and humans bake, and magic imbued stars rule the land, or so they think. Happy Astronaut is perfect for readers of all ages, filled with action, humor, and heart. This debut issue will have many exciting covers to choose from, including a blank sketch cover variant to commission your very own cover. Pre-order Happy Astronaut number one from your local comic book shop or directly from kingspotshop.com. And there you have it. There is all the information you need to know. We'll talk about the uh, the covers and everything else uh, later on in the show. But yeah, that was the trailer that I put together and then had Leslie narrate. Now, we do have a question related to the trailer. Um, let me see here. This is submitted by uh, a, 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 a fan of ours, uh, Troy Dungaroo, I think his name is. Troy oh. Dungaroo. He goes, I was surprised to hear that Happy is a human in the trailer. I just assumed he was something else because of the absence of a nose and just four fingers. Maybe that's something? Question mark. I don't know. Are noses uh, Matt Rogers' only artistic weakness? Is he just bad at counting? So those are some questions directed at Rogers from a Troy Dungaroo, I think is how you pronounce the last name. So can you Actually, it's, it's Italian. It's Danagara. Oh, that's how you say it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so can you address that about uh, uh, coming up with the idea of not giving Happy a nose? All right. Yeah. See this picture right here? Yes. Okay. We're going to get rid of my pencils layer. And we're going to get rid of his forehead line. Mm-hmm. Because it looks <laughs> stupid. <laughs> 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 now it all depends how you draw the nose let's do a little comparison here i don't want to you know get too full of myself here um uh, but uh we're gonna give this a shot and uh how about this nose see that nose looks that looks just fine how about, how about one of these and it looks like i accidentally filled the page so i have to undo that because i uh i was wondering why it got <laughs> weird like that <laughs> The Battle of the Noses. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same reason that I don't. Uh, you know what? Computers. I just had an idea. Uh, when you start signing, uh, at least roughly, probably what 
hundred thousand copies of Happy Astronaut when you're out there on the convention circuit. Um, there should be a tier where you can do a remark and you can just give every person a different nose on Happy. It'll just be a unique <laughs> nose. It's a it's a Matt Rogers remark. <laughs> well, that is one thing that's funny. Here, give me one second. One second. Time's almost up. Uh, uh, so many friends. Uh, so this one. Here we go. All right. So we have this this print right here that I got ordered, and if you look real close, hmm. Rogers forgot to put eyebrows on Happy. <laughs> so that'll be a remark. We'll he'll have different eyebrows for everybody <laughs> that orders one of these. <sighs> so yeah, here I did find this. This is from 2020. And this is when he was wasn't even named Happy Astronaut. He was called the Happy Spaceman. <laughs> love it wow <laughs> I don't even know if I've seen that and I have this little little floating in space with a planet picture of him and his his uh, backpack used to have two little rocket boosters on it and then a rare Matt Rogers colored with a marker drawing of them. See, I don't know if I've even seen that one. It's rough. We got... That's really not very dark, but that's a funny looking guy. <laughs> there we got this one here. Hi! He was just, he's always so happy. And it's hilarious because in the book, he, I, I barely ever really get to draw him smiling. He always has like a really scared or angry facial expression. And this is from original. He was supposed to have a pet dog. Uh, I've never seen that either. Man, tell him yeah. And then we got super old thumbnails. For for pages that never never happened, telling you, we've been working on this guy for so long. Coming together. All right. So what I wanted to do here, uh, just because Roger started off the episode, uh, you know, showing off the uh, drawing a butt, I decided to leave that. Uh, leave that moment here to show our uh, audience. So I'm going to uh, go back into my screen. What's funny is that every time I try to pull down my window on Procreate, I always just keep uh, um, filling in. It keeps just fit, dropping color and then it just, the whole screen turns black. But here we go. This is, this is where I'm at so far. And uh, I'm going to see if I can do this justice here. Mm. Yeah, needs another. You got to give him a little bit of cake. Yeah, that's uh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Just gonna finish the end here. Um. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, uh, I'm going to jump back over into the uh, fan mail folder because uh, I am jumping back over to Leslie because she did have a uh, question. She goes, I'd love to know what inspired them to tell the story of essentially an astronaut and his robotic friend. Um, so I don't know if there's any more you can kind of dive in from what you've already said, but uh now you you've you've had a bunch of other projects uh, that you had kind of you know thrown around, and this one kind of you kept kind of coming back to it. So was there a moment that really just hit it where all of a sudden you knew you were going to commit to this one at all? Um, 
there were a few when keen spot said hey we'll publish your book that was a a definite uh when yeah our when our zoop campaign succeeded um that was a huge one when i realized that happy was could tell such wide ranging stories that I could pull from everything we've created over the past 20 years and throw it in there and it still be like new and fresh. That was, that was a big, um, word. Um, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. brain went blank. Uh, yeah yeah it's one of those things like um if you think about it you can tell any story you want to tell in a science fiction fun like setting so it's you're not limited to you know like if you're doing superman you pretty much have to tell Superman stories. But like, we can tell whatever story we want based on what planet type Happy goes to. You know what I mean? Like, let's say Fife's feeling saucy and wants to write a Civil War story. Happy lands on a planet that has two sides that are at war. And he gets to tell that story through the eyes of our character. Or let's say that we have a, we really want to delve in and do some like character work with happy and half. Then we can have a comic that's set mostly on the ship and it's just about them and their day to day lives or whatever. You know what I mean? Like we can do literally whatever we want with the book and it's super fun that way. Yeah. And also you can really work the imagination a lot because it's space and it's a bunch of stuff that doesn't really exist yeah you've kind of carved out a path that allows you to uh you know just kind of have fun and kind of almost maybe even reinvent yourself uh as you go along and and uh you know with having kind of one-off adventures you know things that still kind of carry on with the uh the story and everything like that but kind of putting yourself in a situation where you can uh you it feels like you can almost start fresh in every episode and you think that's a accurate uh, a... uh uh yeah definitely every every year um i'm gonna be feeling like doing something else and every year at our current pace We'll be starting a new story, so I'll be able to play with whoever I am at that point as a writer. Yeah. And, and tonight, I'm definitely not an artist. <laughs> well, is that a segue to show us uh, what you've been doing behind the scenes there? Oh, I've been working the eraser pretty hard. <laughs> I have a blank sheet of paper. It's great. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. Uh, Falling Raptors is intimidating, man. I I finally had it click for me on how to properly draw a friggin' boot. So (laughs) we're doing good over here. Yeah, I was looking at the boots that I've drawn, and uh, I just kind of just went at it and just kind of was very loose with it. And, you know, there's still a chance I might go back after the episode and, you know, redo a couple things here and there. But I'm trying to get to the get to the mode where I just kind of want to have fun and just kind of finish something in the moment. And, uh, I did that with, a uh, with an episode that'll be out in the future. I was drawing, um, some Brenna Thumbler related, uh, sheets fan art. And that was the first time in, uh, in real time that I drew something on the show. And I'm just like, you know what, it's done. I don't need to go back the next morning and start from the beginning or just completely redo it. So I'm trying to just keep myself in that mindset of uh, of just uh, going with the flow. It can be hard. 
All right, I'm going to jump back over to uh, some fan mail here. Uh, let's see here. We had, oh man, we have another one here. Uh, just a coincidence, another guy named Troy. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Troy Donatello, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Um, he is wondering between Matt Fife and Matt Rogers. Um, he can't quite decide, but he goes, which one is the handsome one? I can't decide. So it's can me. you guys... My wife thinks it's me. His wife but thinks she... it's me. Oh. I mean, my my wife. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> hold on. He he sent another message. He goes, "Kidding, I know." Wink. It's us, not them. Mats. So it's us. He wrote this to me. So I'm assuming me and this random Troy Donatello guy. Um, so apparently he thinks <laughs> we're the handsome one. So, well, see now he's not like, wrong. I feel like he tricked me. Yeah. That was the answer all along. The whole time. Um, since we've been talking about Troy, who unfortunately couldn't uh, join us this evening, um, I am bringing up what you should be seeing is some happy art that he drew. And uh, we're looking at it here. This is something that's really crazy. It's obviously Troy uh, when you look at the you know, the art style and just the way he, I love how he does his buildings and stuff like that. But let's start with uh, Fife there. Uh, what What's your reaction to this awesome Troy art? He posted this, I think, publicly. So, uh, Yeah, I think he did. I, I love it. Is it for sale? I think, I think it was, I don't know if anybody scooped it up, but I, I think he did say it was for sale. Hmm. Rogers, as the artist and co-creator of Happy Astronaut, uh, what do you what do you think of uh, Troy's art here? It's wonderful. Give me just one second. The, uh, uh -oh. Early '90s Keith Giffen that I see, like later in his career when he was doing OMAC and stuff, he had uh, I could see a lot more Kirby influence on his work, but this looks like. Um, I never read the book, but I definitely seen the cover. Uh, um, Trencher, I can see, I can see like uh, some of the Trencher influence on Troy. And uh, Matt Rogers, and I could be totally wrong, or he could be totally right. I could be. It, there's no in between. Uh, Rogers, what's your? Uh, what do you think about? the specific fan art here i think it's awesome um i have this issue where anytime somebody else draws my character it makes me feel like i draw the worst version of my character <laughs> <laughs> now that, that leads into a good question here on like uh specifically with this one or we've you know talked about like scoop mcmahon's uh, version two on the sketch card is there something that you look at here that would make you rethink anything or or you pretty much have to say like all right that's that's their approach i can't really adapt it at this time or how, how do you think about that so um his i kind of really like how he makes his boots like really big but i wouldn't necessarily incorporate that into mine yeah, because really, when it, when you break his down, his happy is pretty much the same as mine. He has the little astronaut cap. He has the exact same like backpack, his belt. He doesn't do the buckle that I do, but yeah, I just dig it. I think it looks really cool. He has a really good, good art style that uh, I don't have that, <laughs> and it's. Yeah, he does a great job. I love it. That he does. Uh, I'm going to be jumping back into mine here because I just inked some pizza and I had some cheese kind of flying off of it. But yeah, so I've got a uh, an inked happy. I, I made the creative decision. I drew four uh, buttons there, but uh, when I was inking it, I'm like, you know what? I want to go three. 
and instead of the four fingers, I did give him five. How about that? What are your thoughts on me giving him a nose and five fingers? Things that Troy, that random listener and fan Troy, called out. I am fine with it. See, Troy, he, he's always talking about how fast I am and how he's kind of jealous of that. Mm-hmm. You would be amazed at how much time you can save by only drawing three fingers. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, all the That's my real secret. Don't tell anybody. No, I'll I'll cut that out. Oops. <laughs> you better. Yeah. Super I fun. I drew this fan art or the, did the pencils for it so long ago that I'm like looking at it now, just being like, like, oh, I got to just kind of remember what I was actually going for there. But I'm just kind of jumping around and kind of grabbing where he did the whoopee cap over there. Let's jump in on the milk here. What the, what's a whoopee cap? That's the uh, the official term for Jughead's um, crown. That's like the 1930s, 1940s, maybe even the 1920s. But yeah, yeah that, that's what they call it is the whoopee cap. Yeah, because hmm. I knew that uh, it's based on like you buy a fedora and cut the brim and fold it up. But I did not know it was called a whoopee cap. That's a really funny word. Yeah, eventually I just had to learn it when... Uh... When I, I, I cosplayed uh, Jughead for a Crimson Cowl, uh, kind of like Halloween. I forget if it was just like the, the Saturday before Halloween or something like that. But uh, I'll probably put the images up here just because uh, we're talking about it. And I don't think I shared it on our uh, Archie episode, which is going to be released pro- either at the end of June or at the end of July. Um, but yeah, we're looking at the images now. So if, me cosplaying Jughead. So Matt and you Matt, look cool. Oh, thank you. I was gonna say Matt and Matt who aren't seeing this live, you have to just sell it now. Man, I just love giving uh you know future Anthony all this extra work to do. I can just sit back. President Anthony is just relaxing, kicking back, swigging water, got a canister of peanuts over here, just just living the life. And meanwhile, future Anthony tomorrow morning it's just like uh i gotta go find these photos on my camera roll and but hey you got you know what they say man (laughs) sleep is just time travel to breakfast (laughs) yeah they do did abraham lincoln say that no abraham linkage i almost i almost said linkage and i actually had to like hesitate at the end because i was so used to saying linkage Speaking of all, yeah, uh, I haven't uh, drawn Adventure Bug in a while, so here we go. Just kind of jumping in, and eh, we'll, we'll try that again. He's my favorite to draw. Definitely a, a fun character. That's what I figured I had to uh, throw him into the uh, into the drawing somewhere. So I wanted something happy-related, which is happy and then obviously got something zoop related with lrd and that eyeball got a troy easter egg there uh with dilsey you know um had to throw in some uh quote-unquote uh chris picks inspired cereal threw in the brian lynch pumpkin thing and uh but yeah i needed to know yeah specific thing so i figured adventure bug was a uh an easy commitment You need the turtles in there too. Turtles? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, with the pizza? Oh, 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 is that what the pizza's in there for? Oh, I don't know. I just put that in there because we all like pizza, right? <laughs> I hate it. Oh, let me erase that quick. Whew. I just looked because I, I wasn't sure if I was still on my ink slayer, and I was so. I got scared there for a second. It's it's a terrifying moment. <laughs> Cuz earlier I switched off the pencils just to, for my own reference to look at it and then I was 
and it just hit me now just being like uh did i did i do that sorry sorry right. any, got any cheese uh yeah i do have cheese right here hey there, got big some guy. cheese for you got some cheese for you buddy so yeah, that's where I'm at now. So I'll jump off for a little while. Fife, did you have any progress over there? Are you ready to share anything or not yet? Oh, I mean, yeah. Why not? I say jump into it. what what you got cooking. Oh, there's reasons why. I I write. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see proof of that soon. Oh, right now you're gonna see proof of that. <clears throat> All is right. it Sharon? Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Sharon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no man, that looks awesome. I like <laughs> that you gave him broccoli for hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's my bottom layer, man. That I'll... looks that looks wonderful. <laughs> I'll pull it it's together. Good. Don't uh, be embarrassed. Oh, I'm not. I'm not embarrassed. I I, I know my limitations. Don't beat yourself up over it. It's 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 really too bad that uh, like doing the same sort of uh conversation with writers wouldn't be as interesting, you know? <laughs> right. It's like, hey, check this out. I wrote a <laughs> sentence. <laughs> I was a period at the end and everything. Whoa! Check out that punctuation. Mm. I turn in that uh, Times New Roman. <laughs> I turned in the script for the second issue to Rogers today. Oh, yeah, completed, edited, ready to go. So I get to put these to use now. My Hanson comic book layout pages. Yeah, oh, they're pretty sweet. I don't think you'll be able to see any details on here that are important. So they are blue line artwork paper that have a spot to draw the page. And then a little note section has four pages per page. Super duper cool. All right, I am going to jump back over because I have some Zoop related stuff here. Um, now, let's take a look at this one here. Hey. So, yeah, it, uh, it's really small on my screen. So it's one of those where I'm like, I don't know how good I can even see the image I loaded up here. But yeah, this is your uh, your fully funded announcement. Is that correct? Why, yes, it is. Yes. As now, you can how... tell in the upper left-hand corner, it says just funded. So when you guys launched it on Zoom and you had, uh, what, I think 36 hours, you said that it was funded. Um, how was that kind of experience? Let's get, start off with Fife and just kind of, you know, you put your work out there and... Uh, how did that feel to actually kind of watch the numbers go as you launch? Like, did you refresh like every half hour? Did you try to put yourself of just be like, all right, I'm going to check every hour or half day. What was that process like of just the anticipation of what was going to happen? Um, I didn't plan to check it frequently because I honestly just wanted to get one backer. Over the whole 30 days, I just wanted one backer. But um, I think it launched at, say, 11 o'clock in the morning. And I went to see that if it was live or not. And we had already had somebody back us at, like, 150 bucks or something. Um, and it just kind of blew my mind that, you know, within the first minute, we'd made over 10% of our goal. Mm -hmm. uh so then i was just addicted and i was checking every five ten minutes um yeah it was mind-blowing 
Yeah, it's a good uh, boy. And and Rogers, what was your experience with uh, just kind of watching that? Did you did you kind of follow suit, or what was your approach to watching everything happen? Oh, I was refreshing that page like every twenty minutes just to see. Yeah. I was just like, "Holy cow! Holy cow! Oh, holy cow!" Yeah, dude, it was it was messed up. Like, in I don't know, it was like. I don't know if you were like me, thinking we wouldn't get anywhere with it, but I honestly didn't know just because, like, it's not like we're these established guys in this, like, community, you know what I mean? We're just, like, newcomers, and people came together and really made it happen for us and it was really awesome and it was amazing it was uh unexpected i mean i figured yeah we'll we'll make our thousand bucks you know <laughs> but uh yeah it was it was wild and then it just kept on going yeah but and zoop, zoop was really awesome the thing that sucked yeah. was like um they do the page setup. I don't know. They're the only crowdfunding site I've ever used. So I don't know if this is common, but like you do this page setup where people can like sign up to be reminded when it goes live, like they subscribe to the campaign or something. Mm -hmm. And that lasted a month. So it's like, <laughs> we're sitting here like, I wish it would start already. That'd be cool. Cause like a month seems a bit excessive, especially when we're like, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had to do a whole lot of promotion for yourself out there, but it can, there, there's a very fine line that you have to ride between like the grind or whatever, but also like trying not to piss everybody off. Mm hmm. Being yeah. super annoying, like, hey, check it out. Hey, check it out. Hey, check it out. Yeah, that's why with uh, running the social media for Cartoonist by Night, doing my artist hobby page, and sharing the trailer, I was, you know, I was, I, I was thinking of that the whole time, just being like, all right, how often do I put this and put it here? And I kind of, you know, threw it all out there for one week, and then I didn't do much. And then just recently, I started like, all right, I'll, I'll do one more, you know, another reposting of it, and kind of just throw it out there and uh but yeah just kind of making those decisions on like it's like all right you got to get out there you got to get your name out there and but you also like you said just be like all right you don't want people to get annoyed by seeing it all the time right because if you're too annoying then people are just like i'm not gonna follow you anymore yeah <laughs> silent post and mute mute and things like that but all right, how how is LRD looking over here as I try to put him together? Love it. <laughs> he looks like a, a little robot, dude. Mm -hmm. My plan was that, like, you know, since I drew those pencils weeks ago, I I have the original Zoop comic here at my side, but I haven't looked at it because I just kind of want to, like, I look at this, but then I just decided to do my own own little thing and just kind of go with it and try not to be uh kind of fall back on the uh your source material as much as possible you know i did that when i initially drew it but now that i'm kind of going through in the moment I'm just like yeah hey, i'm just kind of doing it having fun it's like you invented that character yourself oh do i have the rights to him now officially no, no. oh dang it We'll license it to you if you want. Okay. Seven thousand dollars licensing robot, dude. Is that enough? That's probably not enough, is it? Um, let's see. I would get half of that, so that's thirty five hundred. We'd be good for a couple of months. All right. Uh, here's another another message from uh. Man, there's a lot of Troys that follow our uh, our account here, uh, <laughs> our our little drawing show, and 
uh, Troy, uh, I'm tr I'm trying to pronounce this one. Um, let's see here. I can't even think of anything funny. So, uh, Troy Troy D. Uh, Troy D. writes, uh, Art Balthazar asked for the secret origins of the Matt's friendship once. That may be something worth asking. And that pairs up perfectly with an image I'm going to share here. I will throw it over to Rogers first. If you kind of, you know, you talked about, you know, when you met and stuff, but, you know, we, we touched on it a little bit, but can we jump into it a little more, just how that friendship started beyond the, you know, the sharing the locker and all that kind of stuff, just how the origins of your friendship, if you want to go more detailed. Um, well, the this is going to sound way more inappropriate than it needs to, but is this rated PG or is this rated G or R? Oh, probably not R. He's got an edit okay. button. I mean, you, the, you'd you pretty much have to take the oh yeah sound and just slow it down for the whole thing. No, <laughs> we we just, you know, did you, did you ever make friends with anybody in high school? You know what I mean? mean? Like, it was, it was just that. Like, I was two years younger, but it was one of those things where, like, because he, you're a class of 99. Yeah. And that's the class that all of my friends were in other than like two or three people in my grade, I'm class of 01, but like everybody I knew was class of 99. So it's like, that's just the group that I hung out with. Fife was in that group. Um, we liked the same music. We liked all that, that stuff. We liked the same recreational activities. <laughs> we were, we were just, you know, it's just when you make when you make friends with somebody, and we always made fun of him for having such a big comic book collection. It's true, and then always here we are now, putting it to use. I mean, he got me into comics for a little while at least, but then DC did their damnedest to get me out of it. <laughs> and that's when they were putting out great stuff. Yeah, that, that's that, that's it's a thing. That's for sure. How's this looking? Does this look stupid? I can't tell if this looks stupid. No, I was I I like it. It looks all right, but uh, yeah, like it's one of those things where there's kind of not really that interesting of a story to tell about mm -hmm. a friendship origin story, like. Not to trivialize our friendship, but it's just oh, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I'm an amazing artist, and he's a pretty okay writer. Yeah. And I'm just using that to my advantage to work my way to the top. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sorry, uh, that Troy. What's his name? Troy D. Yeah, just it was yeah the letter D. That was it. Okay, I apologize to that man. Uh, not assuming his gender, but uh, it's just uh, he's he's my bud. <laughs> we had crappy kept, jobs at the same uh, places, and what, what did you just say? We had crappy jobs at the same places, and the end. Yeah, we kept running into each other. Like, th there was some spaces of years where you were working somewhere else, and I was, you know, we just wouldn't run into each other after after school or whatever. But then we ended up at that one really crappy job and reconnected really well. Um. Sorry, that was inappropriate. Your 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 paths would uh just kind of keep crossing and yeah. I mean, one weird one weird story that I can tell is so Fife at one point moved out of state 
from where we went to school mm -hmm. and I didn't talk to him for close to I'd say probably about a year yeah just about and I got his I got a phone number from a mutual friend to give him a call and talk to him and when we got on the phone we were talking and then I was like man I got a tat I got my first tattoo today and he was like I got another tattoo today. What did you get? And we both got the exact same thing tattooed. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> was it so that was, pretty, uh, was it just wild. I heart Matt? Yes. That was the tattoo. Oops. One sec. One sec. I'll be right back. No problem. Whoops. I'm just not artisting well today. All right. Rogers is back. The party can continue. Oh, yeah. We held our breath the whole time because we just didn't know how to breathe anymore without you. I have that weird effect on people. But, uh, yeah. Did I miss anything cool? Yeah, you did. Uh, Shit. I, just, I discovered yeah. there was uh, some green some random green lines that uh, were on the edge of my drawing and Fife suggested that maybe I had it on a different layer and I checked and sure enough, I must've did a color test a while back and, uh, and a little green stayed on my page. Man, that Fife guy, what a, what a stand up man. Solving all the problems. So yeah. Um, what were we talking about before I had to leave for a minute? I think the origin of your love of Crispix. Oh, man. So you've heard of checks before. Oh, yeah. Well, Crispix is like if checks were better than they are. Because <laughs> they're bigger. They hold more milk, so the milk to checks ratio. Yes. Oh, don't even get me started on checks. Well, just because we're bringing it up now, I guess I'm going to dive into the uh, into this generic original cereal here. What you should do is instead of cereal, you should have the box say "not checks." <laughs> not checks. <laughs> I, I could probably do that. Because then when they're like, um, this is copywritten, you're like, no, obviously you don't know how to read because this clearly says that it is not checks. Oh, look at this. I just drew the mats uh, handing off something See? to each other. I'm telling you, man. Look at that. I knew we should have copywritten that or trademarked that. Hello, I would like to trademark the letter H, please. Not checks. Yeah, not checks. Don't be ridiculous. No, I'm, I'm real nervous here with uh, inking this not checks here in front of the not checks master. So uh, actually, I'm going to go thinner in there. <gasps> hmm. Uh-oh, I just heard a hmm. Hmm. Are you figuring out how stuff works over there, bud? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest feeling in the world? Uh, Anthony's sharing right now. And I just stopped because I was doing it naturally, so go ahead. What you got over there? Oh, we don't want to see this. <laughs> I was already see it anyway, I mean. I was already Somebody hitting might. stop, so I didn't, yeah, so it was just a good coincidence. Here you go, guys. This is this is what I got going on. I'm sorry, world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh man. You don't need to apologize at all. <laughs> we should I do just... 
I just at any time that you write a script where you can like you're just having trouble and you can't come up with more than like 20 pages <laughs> I'll write a four page backup and make you draw it all right let's do it <laughs> and that'll that'll go in the back and then we'll get kicked off of our publisher <laughs> no I think they like us they better about to make all the money So yeah, man, what's up, everybody? You well, can tell that we're all real tired. It's also just a nice, uh, you know, it's a relaxing. People might be drawing along or just kind of hanging out. And um, I do have some more things to share now to kind of wrap up kind of the Zoop era. I, oh, yeah, I was going to say this earlier. Um, talking about, you know, anticipating wanting at least one backer and things like that. Now, we're all fans of Oh Yeah Comics, and we're part of the uh, their Facebook group titled I Like Pink, very much Lois. And my first interaction uh, came through Matt Fife with seeing a posting about Happy Astronaut with a brand new comic that's coming to Zoop. At that point, I think I maybe backed... I think I've maybe backed one thing from Zoop before. There's a lot of more crowdfunding sites... Uh, have kind of come out in the in the last handful of years and but I saw this and I took a little preview I'm like oh this looks pretty cool it's a fellow oh yeah fan all right I'll do it so I backed it and uh eventually I would post I think I talked about this in the oh yeah comics episode about posting my Gujinana uh fan art and seeing the reaction from I saw one from Troy I saw one from Fife and these were when I wasn't really, you know, at Troy at that point, I would have had checked out a couple kid slap shots here and there, but uh, wasn't on a, uh, you know, a real conversation friend bit basis or anything. But seeing Fife come through and later putting the names together, being like, like, all right, I don't know who this guy is and kind of looks familiar. Who is this, uh, you know, the so-called writer here? And I'm like, oh, wait, I, I, uh, I backed this project, this Happy Astronaut. So I came across the uh, the Zoop Happy Astronaut campaign, which I uh, backed, and here is the copy of uh, issue number one of the uh, the Zoop edition, which has the awesome uh, Matt Rogers uh, signature, which is continued, it just evolved from here into something much greater, you know. But but it's hard to compete when you have a Matt Fife signature like this. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> look, look at that. Just the, the way those <laughs> letters flow and just like, ah, oh, just that exclamation point. Um, you see, in, in our in our defense. Yeah. Those markers that we were signing with really sucked. Yeah. <laughs> like the ink inside them did not flow very well. And we had to like go over the signatures like two or three times. <laughs> that that sucked a little bit but yeah so fife actually there's some of his signatures that look like a little bit closer to his normal signature but they're just so like thin and you can barely see them because they the ink didn't come out fast enough well that's what makes him special and yeah, so yeah it's, it's it's definitely something i should i should practice is my my signature i think there might be a whole episode. That's a cartoonist by night theme right there. Just, just signatures. Um, so yeah, this uh, first issue here is a uh, a flip book story because up on the other side is uh, more adventures as you uh, flip it over, and yeah, so I backed this and it was pretty exciting to uh, get that in the mail. And speaking of the mail, I have an image here that I pulled from the. Uh, the interwebs seeing a stack of uh zoop backer uh rewards with the comics and such going out um fife were you the one that kind of handled all that the actual yes yeah, yeah it was it was it was fun yeah can you uh is there i mean you said it's fun and then you kind of you know put your you know rested your hand <laughs> on your fist so 
to me, I, I'm just going to kind of break that down. It, it seems like maybe it wasn't as fun as you let on at the start of the sentence. Can you talk about just that whole experience <laughs> of going through getting things organized and coming up with the fact that, hey, I have to go mail this stuff now. How did that go? It it, it was, uh, I, had to, I had to figure out a method to do it, you know. Um, we only had, I don't even know how many backers, but... Um, I'm glad it wasn't in the hundreds or thousands, but just like trying to make sure everybody got what they ordered. Yeah. And it wasn't all dinged up. Yeah. And, but I think and, I got uh, it there except for the posters, the posters. I think, I think a lot of them may have gotten crushed and I'll thank the post office for that. Yeah, I think mine had maybe, and actually, uh, mine has been hanging up here in the background on my uh, on my set here for Cartoonist by Night. Um, but yeah, I think mine uh, maybe just a little bit, but once I had it inside of, uh, you know, I had it inside my portfolio, and then here I've got it in a hard case for the display purposes up here. But uh, but yeah, you know, first time out, and oh, uh, you know, it's in a learning experience but but yeah so alongside the uh the comic and the poster uh, i also have i think a couple of these here the uh the bookmarks here which were the um hi i'm happy astronaut and i need your help to blast off on my cosmic adventures support us on zoop.gg uh from september 13th to october 14th there um, just kind of you know advertising the campaign and then we got the logo on the other side there so i got a couple of these happy astronaut uh, bookmarks floating around but one of the other rewards that showed up here is some original art now rogers can you kind of speak on this uh how many of these did you end up making was this like one of those uh reward tiers where you unlocked other stuff that existing people got these or how did how did that go about again um i think it was one of the tiers i think it was like you selected it originally one that it was like just a pdf one that was the comic and a pdf and i think there was one that had that the comic and the pdf <laughs> um yeah i think i did about 20 15 mm -hmm. or 20 of those you got a you got a really good one yeah, I did. I have one that never got sent out. And at this point, you know, myself and Rogers haven't really. Uh... Oh, nice. Is that one you didn't, send, you didn't send out because you wanted to keep it, or why is that one in your hands right now? Because they're kind of weak. Hmm. Like there's just not a whole lot to them, and I, I was like, I'm not going to give those to people. <laughs> so. That was fun. It was cool. It's just a piece of Bristol cut up into into quarters, but that's real ink on there, bud. Oh yeah, you can tell when I kind of hold it up here. I can you know see all the different uh, all the strokes and every all all the effort that went into it. Um, but yeah, so that was a cool little uh, bonus there. So yeah, that kind of uh, wraps up kind of all the stuff I have to share about the uh, the Zoop edition of the comic. But as we get into, you know, kind of the back half of our show here, or however long we're going, um, let's jump into the keen spot and, and jumping into the fact that you're going to make a brand new number one. Now, you guys um, uh, are appearing on a future episode of Crimson Cowl Comic Club that I host. And it's been recorded already. It'll be uh, put out in a later episode. Uh, this Cartoonist by Night episode, I think, will be out. Um, yeah, it should be out before that. But if you kind of want to uh, talk about uh, the Keen Spot experience and getting to the point where you now you were going to go into an issue number two uh, through a Zoop campaign. But then you kind of had to pump the brakes and jump into uh, an all new number one. Uh, you did some detail on the Crimson Cowl Comic Club, but if you kind of want to maybe retrace some of those answers, let's start with Rogers with the idea of uh, uh, where were you on the art process of uh, 
of issue number two for Zoop? Um, almost complete. I mean, we had what was it? Uh, I think there were 36, 32 pages, 36 pages of the size that we were doing. It wasn't yeah. going to be a flip book for number two. It was just going to be one long story. And I think I had almost all the pages drawn and inked. And I don't know if I scanned any of them yet. But yeah, it was almost completely done. And then all of a sudden this contract came in email that we signed and then they were like we want you to make your book in color and i was like okay and so, <laughs> right on and then they had a couple of suggestions for changes to make um so we couldn't even use any of the stuff for the zoop number two and so we started from scratch we had a couple of little ideas kicking around and I don't think we used any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, kind of all brand new. I'm excited. One thing that I have to say, he's not here to deny it, so it's the perfect time. We owe a lot of this keen spot stuff to Troy. Absolutely. It's weird you say that because I was literally just started my share screen to do uh, Dilsey here. So this is a perfect time to talk about Troy. Let's hear it. Well, he got a hold of our book. I can't, I don't know exactly how. I don't remember seeing his name from like the Zoop mailing, but it might have been. I can no, fill he, he got it from our Gumroad store. I can fill you in on that. But yeah, so he got it. And then he kind of, from what I understand, brought it to Keen Spot's attention. Like, hey, you guys might want to check this out because it's pretty cool. And so he kind of tipped Fife off. So Fife went ahead and went through their submission process. And it just kind of went from there. And it was a whirlwind of things. That's pretty cool. Pretty awesome. That's that's pretty close. So I'm not a big fan of variant covers usually, but if Art Baltazar or Scoot does a variant cover, I'm gonna try and get it. Yeah. Um and Art and Scoot both did variants for the first kid slap shot that Keen Spot put out. I ordered it from Art expecting um a comic with a really awesome cover on it, not knowing anything about Troy. And when I got it, I sat down and read it and I, I loved it. Um, and I think it was like a little bit of guilt in me for like thinking I was buying a crappy comic with a cool cover. Um, I had sent Troy a message on, on Facebook saying, Hey, uh, you don't know me. I don't know you, but I just read your comic and it was really cool. And uh, that started a conversation between us and he ordered, that's when he ordered a copy of, uh, of happy. And then from there, everything pretty much followed what Roger said with um, him pointing us out to Chris at keen spot and um, on and on. But yeah, it all goes, it's all, it's all a lot of it's thanks to Troy. Yeah, uh, kind of talking about Kid Slapshot and Troy and all that. Same thing with me with the variant covers, where uh, it was tipped off to me, uh, just seeing that uh, Art and Scoot and eventually Franco would have covers, and I'm like, all right, I'll I'll check out this comic, you know, and was once again just getting it for the for the uh, the variant covers, and then reading the comic and talking about it on the Crimson Call Comic Club, I'm like, oh, I actually dig this comic. I think there's a you know, there's a, some Silver Surfer and Galactus uh you know, stuff going on there. And uh that's where I, you know, started to become a fan of Troy and going through that and then 
started to kind of recognize that name alongside your names and the I like pink and all the all the fandom for uh oh yeah comics and stuff so yeah cool 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 I don't want to I want to clear up I don't want people to think I'm a poser but I'm actually not a member of I Like Pink Very Much Lois. Oh, is that right? So I don't want people to be like, Roger said that he posts in there, and I've never seen it. I that, I don't really do Facebook a whole lot. I only reactivated it when we started the Zoop campaign. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I rarely update. I just learned how to do stories on Instagram. Yeah. And I'm not a Luddite or anything. I just never got into the whole thing i actually just switched my instagram profile over to a professional profile i did notice that because when i was sharing some stuff realizing that uh i was able to share it yeah it used to be pretty locked down and it felt weird when like art baltazar has requested to follow me instead of just art baltazar follows you <laughs> i was like yeah i'm making already jump through hoops to make them work for it that's right oh yeah oh yeah hey man anyways it always devolves into oh yeah around here um i'm really enjoying this kirby crackle that i'm doing today my goodness oh i love that hard work man yeah i've attempted it a couple times and uh no matter how many references i look at and i just uh i don't think i've mastered it yet i've i don't even think i've gotten close to even i'm not even yeah. in the realm of saying that i i can master it but i have a brush that does kirby crackle mm -hmm. and it yeah. sucks like it doesn't look right at all yeah. The secret with Kirby Crackle is uh, the negative space is the important part that you're supposed to be looking at. <laughs> Instead of the black, you need to make the white part look good. So that's where it throws me off because I'm not that guy. Wasn't there a band called Kirby Crackle? Yes. Yeah, and they do the theme song for comic geek speak yeah i've got uh, a couple other songs uh on my playlist got it on wednesday <laughs> do they still exist i'm not sure current or not but i was just listening i was uh boredom at work caused me to be like i'm gonna listen to the crisis tapes uh, yes and then i was like man they really did take like a year and seven months between two episodes <laughs> <laughs> and then like peter rios left and then came back i want to meet murd and just shake that guy's hand <laughs> he's awesome Muddle the you, you you want to try to muddle the merd sometime? I don't think I could muddle anybody with comic stuff. Yeah, it, it's it's awesome watching the uh, muddle the merds and just like there might be two in a row that all of a sudden you know he gets bested, but on that third one he can just like pull out you know one of the deepest cut things and it's just he just comes in and saves it and it's always entertaining to watch watch that process and. I mean, I, sometimes I have trouble just remembering what I read, you know, at the start of the week when I get to Crimson Call Comic Club and I'm like, oh, shoot, I got to flip through this again and see what the heck was. What did I read? I wonder how I wonder what year he's in in his backlog. Because <laughs> that's I like one of the, the few 2000s. podcasts that I subscribe to that I don't like listen to every single thing. Mm -hmm. 
I'll just be like, oh, I'm not really interested in that topic, so we'll skip this one. But uh, those are fun guys. Hey, man. I think they were the first podcast I found. That or Word Balloon. Yeah, definitely they were in the the early days that do that a party truck USA from Brian Lynch, not the Brian Lynch that we know, but uh, Hollywood's Brian Lynch from a lot of animation movies and secret life of pets and uh, um, the minions and Puss in Boots. And he wrote some uh, angel comics and his own comics and such. But yeah, uh, that podcast, uh, a lot of Kevin Smith stuff. Uh, my buddy Brent pretty much turned me on to podcast. And then that led to, us doing a podcast and being in a, you know, front rows for Kevin Smith and hearing him just kind of talk and encouraging everybody just to do podcasts and stuff. And then finally, after me and Brent would talk about it, like anytime we joked about something, um, it would be like, Oh, we're going to let's save that for the podcast. But it was always a fake thing. That was just a phrase that we use basically for a long time. And then it got to the point where like, you know what, this Sunday, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever, come over, I'll create an agenda, let's talk about movies, television, comic books, video games, food, and then we created uh, the AB Conversation podcast. But yeah, it it was all like the inspiration of just, you know, all those early podcasters with Comic Geek Speak and all the ones I just mentioned. See, I got really into Word Balloon especially when he would have Martin or Marty Pasco on there. Oh yeah, man. Talking about the silver age and the golden age of Superman and stuff. And, uh, and then I looked him up and I found out all this stuff that he worked on, like in TV. And then I ended up actually like having a really weird, like friendship with Marty. Like we were friends on Facebook Marty. and then we would exchange emails and he, it sucks that he passed away and that makes me real sad but that guy from what i understand he was pretty sick but the last time i talked to him he was actually in the process of starting a business to help creators with pitches mm. and he offered me his services for free Whoa. as like a practice thing and I wasted it on some dumb crap that me and Matt Fife made up. <laughs> and he, but he gave me a really detailed response to it. And he said, this wouldn't really work probably, but I'm going to tell you. Was it what I think you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That just wouldn't work. <laughs> just it should. Fun. Right. The climate's not work. right for it. But, uh, I mean, he told me, he said, here is what I would tell anybody that submitted this to me. And he gave me pluses about the pitch. He gave me reasons it wouldn't work. He gave me what does work about. I mean, he gave me like a solid 15 paragraph response. And then we went back and forth a little bit. We would talk to each other on Twitter here and there. And then he kind of disappeared. I, I think the political climate kind of got him to leave social media and uh yeah he's a good dude oh yeah Marty. i'm hoping i'm hoping that johnny sun chips comes to cincinnati well if we post if you post a picture of a single glove sitting somewhere in Cincinnati that might draw him there to to go find find the glove. We'll put Scoot on the case. Oh well, yeah, Scoot. I like that guy. Scoot's a good I had guy. A, I had a chance to say hi to Johnny at C2E2 this year, but for some reason it made me really nervous. And so I didn't. <laughs> You're like, what if he brings up boxing? Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't think I 
told this story to you guys, but we'll find out. Uh, so there was one C2E2. Maybe I, I'm trying to think if I said this on the Oh Yeah Comics episode or not, but um, I had I was listening to Word Balloon. I was in the hotel that I was staying at and getting ready, and I loaded up a Dan Slott interview that uh, had popped up. Dan Slott's my favorite comic book writer that's not named Matt Fife. And I went ahead and I was listening to that podcast as I was getting in the elevator, ready for my walk on over to uh, the convention center. And uh, two gentlemen come into the uh, into the elevator and the tall guy, I definitely knew who he was, but I didn't know the guy that he was with. And, you know, I kind of lowered my volume a little bit just to, in case I had to like answer like, oh, what floor are you going or whatever. And um, and then I hear one guy talk and I hear the voice that was currently on my iPod and I paused it. And sure enough, I uh, was in the elevator with John Suntress, uh, host of Word Balloon. And I was just like, whoa, and this is the first, I didn't know what he looked like. This is the, I just heard that, you know, very awesome, you know, radio voice. And uh, and I kind of, you know, I don't know if I interrupted their conversation, but I had to take a moment, just be like, are you John Suntress? He's like, yes, I am. And I'm just like, it's like, I'm lit literally listening to you right now he's like oh yeah i just dropped the dance slot and i'm like yeah that is what i'm listening to and it was just kind of <laughs> oh hey how's it going and then he was very quick to kind of throw the attention off of him then he goes because he was with somebody and he goes hey do you know uh franco from art you know oh yeah comics and art and franco and that's the guy that when they stepped into the um uh, into the elevator i definitely knew who he was because i talked about their presence at the comic cons and how i would kind of circle their booths but you know i was you know fan of itty bitty hellboy and but all of a sudden you know i saw him there and i was sharing an elevator and i'm like i'm very well aware of you good nice to meet you blah 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 but it was so weird it was i've had that two times i did that with uh john and with uh Justin Tyler from Comic Book Club Live, the podcast that they've been going on for, you know, probably 15, 16, if not 17 years. And Justin Tyler, who's, he's a writer, comedic guy, he does, you know, I think he hosts some kind of shows and does production work. And they'll joke that he's a line producer, but he's not a line producer. But Justin Tyler is another one of those. I didn't know what he looked like. And C2E2, I just happened to walk past one of the small little like kind of convention panel rooms. And I heard that voice and I'm just like, holy crap. And But yeah, it's kind of cool just kind of running into that of uh, hearing, you know, the disembodied voices and then finally <laughs> coming across them in public. Yeah. See, I have the, I have the different problem because I know like dave shied i've been we've been mutuals on twitter for a really long time now and i've talked to him on there and whenever he starts going off with his uh comic book industry knowledge i always make sure to let everybody know to get their notebooks out because dave is talking yeah. and that dude knows he knows his stuff so it's worth listening to any tips he has to give you and i mean like i've run ideas by him and i've asked him questions he's been super helpful and it was weird to me because me and Fife went to Cincinnati Comic Expo last year and Dave was at the Aw Yeah table. And we walked up and Dave was just like, oh, hey, Matt, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and that's a weird feeling because I'm just like, you know me from Twitter. Yeah, that is. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever really prepared for that kind of moment when it happens. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and then like that that was another that was the first time I had met Art Baltazar as well. And like that dude is always he just comes off as such a busy guy. Like he is always working on stuff. Yeah. But he knew exactly who me and Fife were. He knew the exact story that we wrote for Oh uh, yeah, 15. He remembered that it was there. He remembered that we that we were going to be in the book so he made sure to let us know the status of that and it's just like we haven't even introduced ourselves to you yet bro like how do you know who we are yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is weird yeah and yeah i kind of had a moment like that at c2e2 i was talking while well, i was walking up to the uh franco's booth and 
I was just browsing some of his comics there. And then, you know, I just happened to interrupt the conversation he was having with a young gentleman. And I was just like, oh, hey, how's it going, Matt Fife? And that's when I met Matt Fife in person for the first time. I was <laughs> like, you know, you're a little late to get to the con. That's a whole nother story. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> uh, so we hadn't checked in a while, just being like, all right, when are we going to meet up? And I just casually was going to return to the oh, AIA yeah, booths. And then uh, I saw him there and, and I'm just like, oh, this is going to be perfect because I'm, you know, showing up from behind. He doesn't know that I'm uh, coming up to the booth and stuff. And that made for a, <laughs> a rude awakening as Matt Fife got to meet me for the first time. Man. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Ooh, a pleasure pleasure oh, yeah. i have still never met one anthony latch yeah it's weird that uh we've shared all this time so far on uh cartoonist by night hanging out chatting and doing all that stuff but uh hopefully that will change uh coming this fall are you thinking about cincinnati uh it's still on my schedule to very much consider it I just have to get to the point of actually getting real with it. and But yeah, I would like to. Plus the possible signing that could be happening at a different place. Oh, yeah. That's weird. Oh, I see. You're going to go meet up with Gene Ha, huh? <laughs> yes. Now, I will let you know, as I, there was probably a moment where I was going to go to the Gene Ha signing, um, but I had some other stuff going on with the, the podcast and with this show, and I'm like, I have to I have to put the priorities in order here. And uh, so, yeah, just to make you guys feel a little better of uh, who I chose to hang out with today. I would have picked Gene Ha. <laughs> That's yeah. why I didn't mention it until after it was over, because you guys would have just been like, what the hell? Don't, we'll, we'll reschedule. Now, I had a lot of stuff going on, so I wasn't going to... Uh, um, yeah, my plate was full. All right. Uh, I wanted to bring mine back up, because I think I'm done with the inking stage of my Happy Astronauts homage to the Madman comics. So, yeah, this mm -hmm. is where I'm sitting there before I would dive into colors, but Looking at the time of the episode, we never really discuss how long these things are going to go, but I do want to transition into uh, kind of our, maybe our home stretch of talking more about Happy Astronaut to add Keen Spot, but I kind of want to show that before I kind of, I, I put the uh, the pencil down for the time being. Um, I'll but grace I, everybody with mine real quick and then. Yes, please. Um, please, you mean? <laughs> Uh, uh please. Um, share please please no that's what he meant <laughs> here we go hey <laughs> it's it's pulling together <laughs> oh i don't that's think it's the hairstyle the first time i don't think it was on there yet <laughs> <laughs> i love it man you don't have to say that <laughs> Nope, it's in my scripted notes right here. It says, oh, yeah. it says <laughs> stay on script. I literally have to say it because, uh, yeah, it's. I know there's a writer's strike going on right now, but I'm not part of the, you know, that doesn't count. All right. Um, what I was going to do before we jump into that, I was going to show off. Uh, here's the All Reds, um, the Madman Adventures cover that I used as a guide. So the original issue uh, is presenting the art uh, upside down and the poster that I'm looking at off camera here is the image is turned around which is the version that I went to kind of use as my guide for the homage but what's cool about the poster and it's on the comic there too but the poster you see a bunch of objects that are floating around um, which led me to do the same for the happy uh, one I went with less objects so that would be less to draw um, but on the poster, it's a, it has a key at the bottom because all of the objects are drawn by different artists throughout the industry. And I forget who offhand, and I definitely can't see it from here, but I think Frank Miller's on there somewhere. So if somebody drew, you know, like a baseball bat or an apple or a skull or an eyeball, 
all of those different objects on that Madman cover. Um, the main Madman image is done by Allred and Laura, but Mike and Laura, but everything else is a different artist drawing a different object. And the poster, it's signed by Allred. I think it's numbered and, uh, and it just shows off. There's probably, I don't know, is there like 50 artists list on there, I think. So it's a pretty wow. awesome image. So when I was looking around wondering what I wanted to do, I'm like, oh, that'd be a fun one to kind of pay homage to. And Happy has been kind of drawn in that kind of pose before. Rogers has done, you know, when he's kind of jumping, leaping, floating in space and all that stuff. We've seen a similar pose. So I'm like, oh, this kind of fits into, I think it's- Is good... that the original black and white series or- the second color series the madman adventures would be i think the second one because i think there were two sets of three if i'm not mistaken yeah and then the dark horse series yeah so i think uh yeah i think that's from the second set yeah because i think the first one is probably just the titled madman or the odyssey oddity or whatever madman okay. All right, so what I want to do here, um, going to show off some pages. So, uh, yeah. excuse me, the Budweiser frogs in here. What's going on here? Yes. Um, so I'm just going to kind of whip through some of this to kind of show some people some uh, promotional images that we've seen in the trailer. Um, but while I show these, uh, Rogers, if you want to kind of talk about your transition from drawing physical pages of happy astronaut uh the keen spot edition uh but then you know your little mishap with the dimensions and such and so feel free to kind of give a version of that story again um as i show off some of these images yeah absolutely so we got the keen spot deal and it was all awesome and we jumped in and i drew the entire first issue scanned all my pages colored them and realized that i got the dimensions wrong and the ratio was off so it wasn't even a, a matter of like oh well i can just grab the corner and resize it to be the right dimensions that was just all bad it would have stretched things out so i had to redraw all of issue one completely except for there might be five pages that i was able to save the middle panels mm. maybe five pages other than that i had to redraw it all and i had uh we had deadlines and it was terrifying and then i took vacation from my day job and knocked out 18 pages in 11 days to get caught back up yeah that's crazy you know we're all kind of there as you're kind of talking about it you know getting amped for the 11 day uh vacation but then talking about hunkering down and doing all that and uh you know very impressive to go through and just to kind of complete that much work in that amount of time and uh to do more pages than there are days uh but then we would find out too that there was another little thing that that wasn't the only thing you did. What else did you accomplish during that vacation time? I also <laughs> played and beat the new Star Wars game, Jedi Survivor. So that's like 30 hours right there. <laughs> I I'm I know that this is a cartoonist by night, so they know I work fast. Yeah. And uh whoo. I was still exhausted from it, but it was awesome. And it made me realize that if this gets to the point where I don't have to have a quote unquote real job, that I will be perfectly able to do a monthly comic book. <laughs> All right. So what I am going to do here, we saw it in the trailer, but I'm going to go through and um, show off the covers. Now, at the time of this recording and uh you know when this is released uh the catalog for happy astronaut number one from keen spot 
is in the um, the June catalog for products coming out in August and beyond for some of the other stuff that are in there. But you're slated for the end of August for your first issue. Uh, page 374 is where the uh, Happy Astronaut listing is. And you have uh, many a choices for covers. So what I'm going to do here is go through those covers because I got them all loaded up. And um, so Rogers here, you uh, you do the main cover. So here we go. Now looking that is at a direct reference to 1986 Booster Gold number one. Oh, really? With the first issue excitement blurb. Nice. I think you just made a uh, future Anthony I have to search that image and throw that up there now. I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, though. That's his problem, not mine. That's right. Cover B, though. Um, Remember that fan art we showed by, by that Troy D guy? Troy Troy Ding Dong, I think is what it stands for. Um, yeah. But there's a, there's another Troy uh, who happens to be a member of this uh, very show, Cartoonist by Night, uh, is the cover artist for Cover B. How does something like that happen? Uh, you know, obviously you talked about Troy uh, being a big part in, you know, getting happy uh, noticed over at Keen Spot. How does that conversation go? Is this something that Keen Spot jumps in being like, all right, uh, you should do this many covers and you know we recommend these artists or do you jump in with that? So I don't know which one of you would speak on that, but how did Troy get to the point of drawing cover B? Keen Spot definitely suggests covers. They want covers. They they really like the variant cover game. And we originally turned in three covers, and they wanted more. And I thought three was a lot, but we'll do what they say. And uh, for the Troy thing, it was most it was a trade. So it, like he did a cover for us, and I did a cover for his upcoming kid slap shot book so that's how we got around that but we get to pick who we work with we we approach artists and uh work out whatever deal we need to work out to get it i think we can go ahead and announce um issue number two we already have it in our possession but it will have a cover b by one alejandro rosado it's awesome. it's gorgeous too. Oh my goodness. It's and so good. And he's really good. proud of it. He sent me a message on Instagram saying that he's excited to be able to share it because he likes it so much and wanted me to know when what's the date that I'm allowed to share this. <laughs> and that was my next question because I'm assuming future Anthony won't be putting that image in there. Correct. Okay. That one I think we're I think we should probably wait until it's at least in previews sure yeah that's wow. that's the worst part about this industry man is like we're doing work and turn in stuff that's not going to be like on shelves until the end of october <laughs> like it's so far in advance it's real bizarre speaking of bizarre we have another cover here cover c the artist is uh matt rogers now, how do you approach, uh, let, let's give this one to Fife to answer. How do you decide, like, who is going to be your cover C? And, you know, how did you come across being like, you know what, we should give this to this uh, this young up-and-comer, uh, Matt Rogers. How did that come come about? Uh, we just raffled it off. Yeah. It was kind of like a Willy Wonka golden ticket yeah. scenario almost. Yeah. or just. Yeah. And, I mean, he, he pulled it off. It looks great, yeah. It's yeah. But on a serious note, to Rogers, um, like, is this normal for an artist to have two covers, whether or not you know, you know, even if they're the interior artist and such, is that a common thing? I'm trying to think. Like, if I had multiple choices for covers from the same artist and the same book, is that a thing? I'm trying to think if I've ever seen it myself. 
I mean, no, I think that was just a case of like the publisher was like, we need more. And I was just like, uh, uh, uh we don't have money to pay people. So <laughs> I just drew another one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I actually like that cover more than the cover A. I love the background here. Mm-hmm. But that one's the hollow foil. And I think that'll really pop. Yeah. Like that's just gonna look really, really cool because I've seen Troy's hollow foil that Franco did. I have that, yes. So so cool looking. It looks so good. But uh yeah, I'm trying to think if there's ever been a time where there were multiple covers available by the same artist. Cause even like Archie, you have Dan Parent, but then they'll have like Francesco Franco Villa. Mm-hmm. Where did Anthony go? Well, you mentioned the uh, the Franco, so I uh, stepped off screen and I knew exactly oh, okay. where to get I'm that. Scared. I'm scared. You guys are, you got to fend for yourself. Um, so yeah, we talked about it here. So this is wow. It's Slapshot Franco. I picked yeah, this so up cool. at Pontiac Comics in beautiful downtown Skokie. Um, knowing that they had gotten a copy and I was hoping it was still going to be there. I would have been happy if it was gone. That means somebody else bought it, obviously, but I wanted to pick it up myself. So, yeah, that is the example of the hollow foil uh, coming from Keen Spot and that cover C there by Matt Rogers uh, has that awesome treatment. It looks so good. That What's is- the back look like on that? Uh, it has the other cover. Very uh, shiny. <laughs> okay. Cool. I saw it looked like you were looking in Marcellus Wallace's briefcase. The light was shining up on your face from it. Man, oh. so good. Yeah, it blinded myself too. It's well worth it. Um, we're almost done with the covers here because they said to you, you know, we want to give you all of the covers. Uh, cover D here is uh, what happened here? Uh, is the image not loading yet? Maybe I don't know what you guys see on your screen. I just see a blank cover. What's going on here, boys? That one took a lot of time. That was probably the hardest. It's a sketch cover. Oh, yeah. So, like, (laughs) people buy that. And then, uh, see, that's the thing I don't get. Like, I've never purchased a blank cover before. I've purchased sketch covers, but the ones that I got that were called sketch covers were basically, like, the pencils of a cover. Like I have a couple of Superman covers that look like it's just the pencil drawings, but um, I guess that's what people can buy at conventions, and then I can draw on the cover, or Fife can draw on the cover, or, I mean, I guess there's nothing to stop other artists from buying that and drawing on the cover if they want to. We still get their money, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that'll be a fun one, but it's like, when people order them online... Like, you're different because I'm eventually going to be in the same room as you, so you will make me draw on yours. But, like, a random person, I can't imagine looking at a web store and being like, that's the one I want. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, we had kind of lightly talked about it, but uh, I had mentioned that I wanted, I was going to buy four blank sketch covers because I was going to, uh, you know, try one myself. Maybe I'll do a physical rendition of the digital version that I'm doing here. Um, Maybe that's something I'll do. Uh, But I wanted uh, everybody from Cartoonist by Night, you know, the two Mats and Troy, to uh, commission them to do a cover for me. So I had four different covers of Happy Astronaut number one with original sketches on. I'm hoping Fife will do that, you know, that that zombie uh, happy there with him all just kind of, you know, (laughs) I think I can manage that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you think so? Um, and I think it was Troy that had suggested that that would be a good themed episode. We were talking about that in our thread, and I'm like, well, when that issue comes out, that would be a fun thing to celebrate the uh, release of the issue, to have the physical copies in hand, uh, but maybe we would end up doing that on the show. Now, whether you guys would be drawing my covers that I'm going to pay you to do, or you do your own for your own We'll figure all that stuff out, but I think that will be an an episode that will most likely be coming out sometime in September once we uh, get those actual physical copies in hand. August 30th. 
August 30th. So yes, there's one more oh, cover. release date, but there's one more cover, which is uh looking at the weather cover, uh cover E here, which is uh going back to Troy's art. But Rogers, can you speak on this idea of a weathered cover? Because you went and weathered it. Uh, explain that to our audience. Um, I just thought it would be, I thought it's a cool idea that I've never really seen before. I've seen a couple here and there, but that's the retailer variant. You can buy it on the Keen Spot site. And then I think, I want to say it's like if a retailer orders eight copies of our book, they get one of these. I can't remember the exact number. It's like seven or eight, but uh, yeah, I recolored it using like the four color uh dot technique and then i just put creases and writing on it and stickers tape just looks like an old beat up comic it's pretty awesome because originally the suggestion for us was to do um an action figure variant but mm -hmm. we don't we don't have any money to pay an artist to do it so i can work for free yeah so yeah. Yeah. And that's gonna that's gonna be the happy astronaut thing. Issue two also has a retailer incentive that's a weathered version of a book. Yeah, so, I uh, I have I went to keenspotshop.com and I have my weathered uh, cover e pre-ordered through them so i was excited to see that was offered on there so uh mine is currently pre-ordered there um so for anybody else that is interested that is definitely a good route to go to get that copy uh, pre-ordered and um so yeah those are all the different covers all currently in the june catalogs uh for products coming out in august and beyond uh, but I talk about this on the Crimson Cowl Comic Club, how uh, important pre-orders are, not only for the customer to make sure that uh, whatever books they're excited for are ordered, they're set aside for them uh, in case they don't get into the shop every single week. You know, if something comes up, they got to go the day after new comic book day or something like that, that uh, stores, if they offer pull list uh, subscriptions, they can order that stuff in and set it aside for you. Uh, whether you order through your local comic shop, which a lot of people always, uh, you know, love to uh, stress that, you know, to support the the comic shops that are out there. Some people don't have local comic shops to them. So there's definitely other options to, uh, you know, certain online retailers, especially with keenspotshop.com is definitely uh, one of those sources there to uh, obtain your pre-orders. And not only is it reserve your copy for the customer, but it's great for the business, the retailer, uh, the store, whatever, so they know to get the stuff uh, ordered and uh, ready for you, but also lets the publishers and the creators and everybody know that there's interest in your book. And putting those pre-orders in there might uh, you know, get a store to notice that. Maybe it got lost in the catalog. There's so many different things you can order from. And if they see people have interest for these books, they might look into and be like, oh, well, somebody wants this. Hey, let's. Hey, there's some retailer variants. If we order seven more or whatever, and you know, to meet some of the demands, or they might just get you know a couple copies of cover A or something to throw it out there. So it's definitely uh, very good to pre-order it. Plus, it just helps uh, ensure that your copy is going to be waiting for you, and not to kind of expect to show up on a new comic book day. Um, especially when we're diving into like some independent publishers, you know, it's probably going to be a little easier to get a copy of the new Spider-Man and the Batman and the Wonder Woman and all of that stuff. But something like this to help support uh, the brand new creators, uh, Matt Fife and Matt Rogers, uh, pre-orders are key and it's a great way to show your support for everybody involved with putting that comic out there. So, uh, so yeah, all the information is there. Uh, the order code is up there, too. I mean, I'll throw it back up there uh, to let your shop know. And that way it'll help uh, um, for them to find it and get that all written down. So, yeah, um, I think that is all the information that one needs to get their hands on a copy of Happy Astronaut. Um, let's yeah. see. You can come see us at Cincinnati Comic Expo. And when is that one? 
September. September September 22nd to the 24th, I think. Yeah. And then will that be your first convention? Um, I mean, based on the, the time of the release and everything, but that'll be your first convention together. Happy astronaut number one, keen spot. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be that's gonna be a big, big moment, big, big memory maker right there. And I hope I hope so. And as long as I can get my schedule working out and get my plans, I'm uh, I would hope I can do that. I am actually going to be tabling at a convention at Milwaukee Mighty Con at the beginning of the month, which will be my first time tabling. Um, you know, Matt Fife uh, was out there spreading the word at uh, one of the Comic Cons at uh, Muncie, right? Yep. Uh, nice. But yeah. But it's kind of crazy when we're talking about all this stuff happening. You know, we're all kind of on these, you know, kind of similar adventures, you know, so to speak. And uh, it's kind of exciting where I'm just like, man, September, if I end up, you know, I'll be tabling at this con. And if I can make it happen at the beginning of the month, I'll do that. And at the end of the month, you know, travel down and, uh, you know, meet you guys in person, you know, together. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, and then we, there's a chance we could see each other a few weeks later. Yes. Somewhere. When, yeah, because uh, MTV, I think, had reached out. They wanted to do a reality show. And we should mention this. You know, a lot of times when people come out with comics, they get optioned uh, for, you know, big time movies, Netflix deals, Amazon deals, all that kind of stuff. But MTV uh, reached out to Cartoonist by Night the literal second I hit published on that, uh, <laughs> on that episode. And they're like, hey, we want to do... You know, brand new reality show. We're putting, you know, a couple cartoonists in a house together, putting all the cameras on, no script. We're just going to throw you out there. And so, yeah, it, uh, you know, we're all going to be living together for an MTV uh, reality show. Would, that, that's what you were talking about, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I didn't want to, yeah, I just didn't want to, you know, lead. I thought that's what you meant, but I didn't know how much we were allowed to say. So, yeah, some of that I might have to cut out, but once again, that's a future <laughs> Anthony problem. Yep. <laughs> or future now, Anthony. Now, as we go through here, um, we'll show some fan art. I have uh, two pieces of fan art to show off, and um, and then uh, we'll kind of show off our art that we've been doing here. So the first thing I'm going to show off here the first thing I ever did on Procreate, uh, Matt Fife had uh, reached out to me and we collaborated on a project that uh, we'll talk about, you know, in future episodes and such. Not going to talk about that here, but it led me to change my sketchpad programs. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to pay, I think it was a $10 version of Procreate or something. All right, I'm going to do this, test it out. Did a really quick to me, it was a really quick sketch because all of a sudden everything was just flowing differently from the app that I was used to drawing on for uh, so many years. And I came up with a uh, little happy astronaut fan art. And I remember like, so this is very early in my like post Guji Nana like art saying, hey, we're going to put this in all yeah comics, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that like really set the ball rolling. And uh I did this, and then you, I imagine it was Fife that ran the, the accounts for Facebook, but sharing it, my this art alongside, I believe it was Scoots and Art's sketch card versions of Happy. And just to be, like, tagged and collected with the other two guys, just being like, well, I don't, you know, the imposter syndrome and stuff, being like, hey, why am I throwing in, you know, I feel weird, you know, I, you know, I went a little <laughs> too far into the you know, deep end of the pool there to just to, you know, let me sit in the shallow end for a little while. Um, but yeah, this art that I did was just thrown up there in a, in a shared post. I was like, well, that's kind of cool. Um, so that's something I did there. And then uh, Kirby, who is from the uh, Crimson Cowl Comic Club podcast, and he also has a spinoff podcast under the cowl of MS. Check that out on wherever you get your audio podcast, as well as YouTube. But uh, he submitted some fan art uh, for the anticipation of this episode when we reached out to uh, the fans, the listeners, the viewers. And um, so he got to work <laughs> on this here. And uh, he did a huge, he works on some large sheets of paper. So he was able to throw in like 
you know, basically a multiverse of happy going on here. Um, so I, awesome. I mean, zoom in here <laughs> just to see all the different craziness that's happening here with the planets. We got some surfing, uh, and then we got him rocking out to. Oh, look at what the uh, what the guitar uh, is uh, connected to an amp head of some sort. There, it's a recognizable. <laughs> You got awesome. the eyeball up there. You got a good old thumbs up here. You know, so far I th I've count, you know, four fingers, no noses. There. All right, we got some flying saucers. You got this one over here. Oh, look at this. Yeah, I like that car. <laughs> Is that uh, Kachow? What's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Owen Wilson? Is that his car? Um, and then we got a, uh, a motorcycle, uh, happy over there. I don't think this thing ends. It just keeps on going. <laughs> I think Waldo is in here somewhere. I haven't seen him yet. Ah, uh, here we go. We got another, uh, happy version there. Um, look who his earrings are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. They're, Beautiful. They're got yeah, his. Uh, the rocket Wonderful ship. Wonderful little quaff of hair. Yeah, I think I covered everything on there. We didn't find yeah. Waldo, but it, that's where you kind of go back and kind of keep researching that. So, um, so yeah, that was some fan art that was uh, represented, and I think it's safe to say that that will be seen elsewhere uh, in Happy Astronaut number one in the letters pages. Can we say that? We can. That that very piece of work and yours will both be on the letters page on the inside back cover of Happy Astronaut Number One. Oh yeah, man, it's awesome. Yeah, it's very uh, very happy to see that opportunity, and I was excited to jump at it. And that's something that you know we talked about this before, where you know something I drew back in like you know September or whenever I drew it, and you know. Anthony now would maybe go back and, you know, do up, but I'm like, you know what, I'm comfortable with it, throw it out there, you know, and I think I've been pretty easy at it, but, you know, as a hobby artist, you know, there's nothing at stake for me here, you know, I don't care what's out there for the, you know, I, I like to see, you know, have that out there and see other things that I've done since and see the progression, but I'm pretty, uh, trying to think of a word for it, but like an emotion, I'm pretty happy with it, I guess, is what I'm really trying to say here. All it's right. So beautiful. So um, what we're doing here, I think we're about to wrap up looking at the time here. I think we're uh, kind of coming in at a decent time for a, a very special episode of uh, Cartoonist by Night, celebrating uh, the previews announcement, the pre-order window for Happy Astronaut number one. We've given all that information. I'll throw the trailer up at the end again. But uh, what we're going to do here is revisit the art that we did. Um, any of the finished pieces will be uh, represented in the uh, in the end credits. But let's take a look at uh, Matt Rogers there um, as he's adding some extra stuff in there right away and uh, sprucing it up for this very segment. Woo! What's great. I can't wait to like kind of watch you do that. Like as I'm like hosting and watching the recording and share screens and doing my own thing, I'm making sure I'm, uh, you know, I, I can't watch everything that's happening. So it's been pretty fun to go through and edit the episodes and actually see the stuff being made right before my eyes. So. Yeah, that's my piece. Awesome. That's good. <sighs> I love I it. I work fast. <laughs> that he does that's one thing that uh i think we've seen here on the show and uh definitely from uh being friends with you and hanging out and uh just seeing how quick uh some of those images uh pop up and so i'm gonna load up mine mine didn't change from the last time i showed up but because it's the end of the show uh we're going ahead going ahead and uh just showing that so this is where i'm at with the inking stage i see right now there's a part here that I have to erase uh, right into this area. That's uh, a little mark got stuck in there. Uh, but yeah, so this is the inking stage. Um, so I will go through. I think I'm pretty happy. I think I might do another pass on Happy himself when it comes to 
getting some thicker lines and looks like I got to I didn't do that part yet because I kind of went over him a little bit after I was done. Um, but yeah, I think everything else, I took a Rogers editing note there and went from generic serial to not checks. There yeah. you go. I love so, it. Yeah. Oh, and I do have to draw all of the little uh, details on the tentacles, whatever you would call those, like the little suction details and stuff. All uh, those dang cups. Yeah. So I gotta I gotta do all that stuff yet. Um, but yeah, so this is where I'm at, and then off air I will do the coloring, and in the credits, I will show off the finished piece. Now I did do a background, it'll pop once the colors are in, but this is I'll turn everything else off. I had kind of just been playing around with just doing like swirly crazy backgrounds and looking at the uh you know the black hole that Madman was going into. Yeah, I didn't want to replicate that. I just kind of wanted to, you know, just kind of do my own little like oil spill type of thing going on there. But, uh, but yeah, so that is what, and then there we go. Everything disappeared. Nope. Looking at the original pencils, then looking at the inks. All right. So I think I bought enough time there. Uh, Fife, uh, you're the last one to show your work. So let's see. Uh... Best for last, right? Uh, yep, yep. That's that's why I did it. I wanted to go from uh, uh, worst to best. Sorry, Rogers. It, it just <laughs> mine had a nose on it. So, so mine hasn't changed uh, <laughs> since I last shared either. Yeah, but I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> yeah, we definitely needed another another look at it. And... Yeah, um, I need I to think... finish his belt and like his pants and hands. I, dig, that, I, I, dig I think tongue. it's done. I dig the tongue there. I like the. I've, I've been kind of experimenting with uh, how to draw certain tongues and things like that. And I think I still need some work on it, but I, I dig that one. Yeah, I think he's scared. I'm not sure which direction his tongue is going. Um, but he's so scared that the tongue doesn't even know what direction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I found. Um, I like these thicker lines I'm putting on this this half of them, you know? So I think I'm going to go around and thicken up all those lines, and it'll still look like crap. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, yeah. You know how many people in the world uh, didn't draw Happy Astronaut while we recorded? And you have that on them right there. Uh -huh, but, I like, do. A bunch of people sitting at home, they're probably all sleeping at this point. So. Yeah, when they're making fun of of me for not being able to draw happy, I can just be like, I I wrote it. There you go. <laughs> that, there's there's my claim. All right, folks. Absolutely. And uh, that is going to be it. I, I exhausted all of the share screen stuff. I think I exhausted all of the fan mail. I'm just going to do one final check in case I uh, missed anything um oh actually yes uh so here's the the last one that had come in when i called for a last call so this will be the last question coming from uh listener kirby you know once again crimson call comic club under the call of ms uh he has a question for the mats and happy astronaut is the future plan is there future plans for possible crossover uh when you're living in the keen spot world when it comes to being published by Keen Spot and you see some creators kind of do, you know, covers and things like that. And I know Troy definitely has made a lot of friends and kind of worked with some of the, you know, people working on the, uh, the Nuke Rooster book and stuff like that. Troy had a hand with doing covers and kind of doing some design work and stuff like that. So in the early stage of Happy Astronaut here, uh, is there any ideas flowing, floating uh, when it comes to like, going beyond your initial story when it comes to crossover dreams. Can you kind of speak on that a little bit? And obviously you can't, you know, we're there not, are no saying, plans. We're not uh, saying give all the answers, but yeah, there are yeah. no, there are no plans. I mean, I want to do a kid slap shot story um, with Troy, but um, a crossover I'm not sure on um, yeah. Kung Fu Lagoon. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, all three of these books are space, you know, yeah. but um, I I don't see any 
they're all creator owned. I don't know how any of that would work. So, yeah, with being kind of, you know, new to the game, jumping into this, coming with issue one, obviously you have your plan on, you know, you said you had just submitted a issue two over to, to Rogers and stuff. So you got your own uh, mission happening, but yeah, just the idea of, you know, playing in that world and obviously endless possibilities and such, but, but yeah. So. Yeah. We, we can say cryptically we have been invited to do a pretty big crossover. Mm, that is true. It would involve Spider-Man, Batman, like, oh, legal, Superman. Legal things. Like, we'd legal. have to get clearances for stuff in a two-way sort of situation. Um, and that would be really fun to pursue. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, I'm in full happy mode mm -hmm. and I don't want to make it sound like it's an uneven playing field, but like my half of the work takes longer than Fife's half of the work. So while I'm doing this second issue, and he, even if he were to write the entirety of issue three, he's still going to have like extra time that he can do other projects and stuff yeah. and once we get because since i don't have to redraw all of issue two it'll be done a lot faster than issue one was so we will be able to kind of build up a bank and we will have three or four issues done where we're so ahead that we can that's when i can like look at the possibility of doing other things like that but it's kind of just like i i could but i don't want to because i just want to work on happy and oh, get yeah. that stuff cranking out so yeah it's it's we have our wants as far as that kind of stuff goes yeah yeah all right well, I think that is going to wrap it up. I think we covered as much as we could. Uh, if you also go to the uh, Crimson Cowl Comic Club, which I believe is episode 268, that will be out uh, after this one is posted. So just subscribe over to Crimson Cowl Comic Club, audio and YouTube, and uh, you'll see Matt and Matt join us in the Crimson Cowl Comic Club crew and talk about it. There's some stuff I think we talked about Um that wasn't covered here, so it's not meant just to be a, a shorter version of this, but there's a couple of different things that were discussed and uh, other questions and uh, other people talking other than just myself. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be a fun companion episode to talk about that. And uh, you also have a, a repeat appearance coming up on another show, if you want to plug that. Just uh, the, is it Keeping It Geekly? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes. As of, on, as of the date of this recording, we are going on there tomorrow. So by the time this comes out, yeah, if you go to the Keeping It Geekly YouTube channel, you'll be able to watch our interview on there. Um. Yeah, Cody's awesome. He's super fun to talk to, and I'm excited to go back on it and talk to him more. He's a cool dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had watched that first one when you guys are in, you know, talking about the Zoop campaign and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, that was all pretty cartoonist by night and pretty kind of really, you know, diving into, you know, knowing you guys and everything. So it was kind of fun to, and since I had mostly talked to Fife and things like that, I didn't, didn't know about much about the mysterious Rogers over there. So it was fun to, you know, see some of that unfold. So I definitely will be checking out uh, the upcoming appearance keeping it geekly keeping it geekly yo 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 cool cool and yeah and we'll continue to, as we do more episodes of this very show we'll continue to plug uh you know the progress of the book and you know uh talk about where you can pre-order it and upcoming appearances and things like that but the main thing was kind of doing a deep dive into um happy astronaut talking how how it came to be and kind of getting the word out there and hopefully this uh gets out there and you'll see the the trailer once again i'll probably repeat at the end of the episode as well so you'll probably see it at the start you'll see it uh, at the beginning of the discussion and uh, by the end of it you'll be like all right i've got this trailer memorized but it's it's all fun stuff i like it plus you get to see all of the 
gorgeous happy astronaut art by Matt Rogers. So, and what more could you want? So nothing. There we go. So that is going to do it. We're going to have all of our plugs in the credits alongside with the finished editions of our art. And uh, so you can check out all of that stuff there. And the important thing for us, you're watching this on YouTube. It's the only place to uh, check us out. So uh, hit subscribe if you haven't before. Feel free to give a like, you know, comment and give a share. Hit that bell. Yes. Hit that bell, ring that bell, hug that bell, all of that fun stuff. And uh, yep. And stay tuned for more cartoonists by night as the weeks go on. But that's going to do it. Uh, for this episode and actually when I, I i look over here kind of off camera I, i'm starting to see that the the sun is kind of starting to come up now and i guess it's time for us to get back to our day jobs yeah i guess a robotic stowaway named Half are on a mission. Find whoever stole Half's missing pieces and get those pieces back. After promising each other that they'd pursue even the faintest of clues to the furthest of corners, our spacefaring duo have bounced from one adventure to the next, hoping that eventually they'll end up in the right place at the right time. Their next stop, a tiny little oasis on a giant planet of star spewing volcanoes, a place where robots melt and humans bake and magic-imbued stars rule the land, or so they think. Happy Astronaut is perfect for readers of all ages, filled with action, humor, and heart. This debut issue will have many exciting covers to choose from, including a blank sketch cover variant to commission your very own cover. Pre-order Happy Astronaut number one from your local comic book shop or directly from keenspotshop.com.